Hey everyone, Vinayak here. I always wanted a NAS at home. I do have a WD cloud, but it's slow and not expandable. And I have this system on the side, which can be converted into a NAS using TrueNAS, which was previously known as FreeNAS. So let's build our own. TrueNAS is an open source network attached storage software developed by iX Systems. They have pre-built solutions available via their website, but it can also be installed onto your own hardware to build your own NAS. And at the heart of TrueNAS is OpenZFS file system. You can also expand its functionality with a variety of free plugins like Flex Media Server, Nextcloud, ZoneMinder Surveillance, and many others. I am installing TrueNAS Core onto an existing barebone system, so follow along for the installation procedure. I have here the Cooler Master HAFX B Evo case, which has these hot swappable drive bays, and ample room to host more drives within as necessary. Tons of space for upgradability and ventilation. The processor is the Core i7-7700 and I have an 8GB stick of RAM on there. Should be ample power and RAM to run TrueNAS. The motherboard is a Izzy 270E ROG Strix motherboard and we have 6 SATA ports. The power supply is 550 watts, more than enough for a couple of drives. Download the TrueNAS ISO off the TrueNAS website. I'm using TrueNAS Core with version 12.0 U6. And now that's done, we need to create an installation media as a source or installer drive. And I'm using this flash drive which has a capacity of 8 GB. Uh, we need to flash the ISO onto the flash drive to create a bootable installer. And Balena Etcher is the software I use for most of my projects, especially on the Raspberry Pi, and it can help with flashing the ISO onto the USB stick. I'll be installing TrueNAS onto this 250GB M.2 drive, which I have spare now that I have upgraded my main system with a 500GB Gen 4 NVMe drive by Crucial. And if you haven't seen that video, here's a link. You need to insert the USB stick into a free USB port do note all data on the flash drive will be erased. So if you have anything important on your drive, back it up first. Okay, back to getting the installation media ready. Open up Balena Etcher, click on flash from file. Select the ISO you downloaded earlier. Now select the target media, which is our flash drive. Be very careful which one you're selecting as all data will be deleted. Okay, once you select the target drive, we have the flash button available. Tap on that. Wait for Balena Etcher to complete the process. The image is now burned onto the flash drive and we are ready to install TrueNAS on the target computer. Okay, before I can install anything, I need to get the target system up and running. And I'm installing the NVMe drive onto that machine. Okay, the system is ready and it boots. So now the next task is to install TrueNAS onto this NVMe drive. 256 GB is more than enough. Okay, make sure boot from USB is enabled in the BIOS. And once we have the USB drive inserted into a free port, Restart and you should be greeted by the TrueNAS menu. Tap Enter to start the installer and here we are. Four options are available, pretty straightforward. As I want to install TrueNAS, tap on one. I don't have any other drives installed, so it'll display the only drive available at present, which is the NVMe drive. Most other video tutorials instruct using a USB stick instead of an actual drive, as the installation doesn't take up much space and once loaded into memory, it doesn't need to pull the drive anymore. But with TrueNAS supporting a plethora of plugins, USB space will fill up quite fast. But if you want to use a USB drive, it is possible. But it should be plugged into another port. So you will effectively need two USB sticks. So I'm selecting the NVMe drive. If you have more than one drive listed, use the arrow keys to move the cursor up and down and space bar to select. Click on the OK button at the bottom and we are shown a warning that everything in the drive will be deleted. Click on Yes. Next, we need to create a password. Enter a password of your choice and make sure you remember it. Select the boot method between BIOS and UEFI and click on OK and the installation should start. It will complete in a few minutes and it's done. Okay, the installation is done. Now to make sure to remove the installation drive. If you are using two USB drives, make sure you remove the one with the installer and not the USB stick you installed to. Make sure to connect the system to Ethernet using a LAN cable, which is like, duh. How can a network attached storage work without being connected to a network? Reboot and you should be welcomed by the TrueNAS console. Take a note of the IP address that's shown at the bottom. We need this for remote administration. So on a system connected to the same network, open up the browser window and enter the IP address you have noted. 
a login screen shows up. Enter root as username and in password, enter the password you had created earlier. And as simple as that, we land into the true NAS dashboard. Wow, it looks beautiful. This is where you can configure all aspects of your NAS. Super cool. All information about the system, true NAS version, CPU usage, memory and network connectivity is shown here. All customization options are available on the left and you can configure quite a lot. You can create accounts for access, check system stats and more. But what we need at present is storage. I don't have any drives installed at present. So give me a sec and I'll add these to the system. Before setting up anything else, let's go to the general settings and set the time zone, which is important for time-based access you might set up for some users. Another important setting is to add an email ID to the root user, so that if TrueNAS wants to send you an email for important events like failure, disk space low, etc., it can. Now that we are here, go back into storage pools, create a new pool. Basically, a drive set. We can select which drives we want to be part of the pool, you can get a layout auto-suggested using this option here. I have two 500GB drives and both are automatically added to the VDEVs. You can manually select and deselect drives using these arrows here. Select a drive and you can remove it using the left arrow or manually add one using the right arrow. Ok, at the bottom we have the option to change the type of RAID we want to run. We have two options. One is Stripe and the other is Mirror. In mirror or raid 1, the contents of one drive is mirrored onto the other. That's why you get only a total of 463.76 GB of space, which is half the total capacity. This layout is useful when read performance or reliability is more important than write performance or the resulting data storage capacity. Another option is stripe or raid 0, which would gang the drive selected to act like one. Since RAID 0 provides no fault tolerance or redundancy, the failure of one drive will cause the entire array to fail, as a result of having data striped across all disks. This configuration is typically implemented having speed as the intended goal. Top left, we can name the pool, so enter a name, and we have a create button at the bottom. Confirm and hit create again and it will format the disks, so pray you don't have anything important on them. The pool is created, now we need to create a dataset. So click on the hamburger menu on the right and click on add dataset. Name it as you like, submit and the dataset is ready. If you have multiple users going to access your NAS, you will need to create accounts for them and set permissions. A root user is then the main administrator so this account is present by default. We can add new users using the add button on the top right. Enter details, name, username, password are mandatory, other fields like email id can be ignored. Enter details and make sure to select the Microsoft account checkbox at the bottom to be able to access the drive from Windows. Submit and the account is ready. Now we need to provide access to the dataset to this user. So back to the pools, select the dataset, edit permissions, select the new user you created as the owner and group, select the same user. Set the permissions as required using the checkboxes here. Save the dataset and now it should be accessible to the new user with the permissions as set. We need to now create a Windows Share which is available under the Sharing tab. Add and select the dataset by clicking on the drop downs. Submit and enable service. An ACL or Access Control List dialog pops up. I'm using a default preset so just select that, hit continue and done. Now we can access the drive via Windows which is easy. A manual way is to open the file explorer, enter the IP address for the NAS in the folder bar and a Windows security dialog pops up asking you for the credentials. Enter the credentials for the user you want to log in with and here we go. We have access to the drive. Now you can use it just like you would any local drive but it is stored on the NAS which can be anywhere on the network. Maybe in a server room or any other users logging into the NAS share drive can access and copy files as setup. We would generally set permissions so that users can only access files they have been provided permissions to access. To not have to do this again and again, you can also map the drive for quick access and it becomes an item in your drives list. On the top right, we can see the task manager and what tasks are currently running. Then you have alerts to know what's happening on the system, what happened recently. Then you can dismiss all your alerts from here. 
then you have options to change password, preferences, API keys. And this is one nice one. This is the theme. So you can select between multiple themes already available. So you select one, update preferences, and it will change the entire interface. I like the standard dark theme. Then you have the power options such as logout, restart, and shutdown. We have a plugins configuration where we can select which plugin we want to install. Click on the plugin, tap on install, and it should install onto the NAS. As simple as that. This is a simple way to set up your own NAS at home. Quite simple and easy to use. I hope this tutorial helped you. And if you have any questions, do mail me at tech at talkingstuff.net. And so that was the video. Make sure to like, subscribe, and also hit the notification bell to be notified when new videos are added. Thank you for watching and see you all next time.